Hey, what is going on everybody? So I got a video for you on marine rigging this time. Um, so at one point or another, if you own a boat, you are going to have a problem with your electronics. Uh, it happens to everybody. If it hasn't happened to you, it's because you haven't had a boat for long enough yet. Um, and it stinks when that happens because you know, I was going to go fishing the other day, and I couldn't because my bilge wasn't working. Um, and it can be really expensive to take it to the marine mechanic and be charged at least for a couple hours worth of labor to fix something like a bilge pump or something. So I went ahead and I created this video to help you understand how to do marine rigging. Now, um, this is not a video where I got underneath my boat and started filming and showing you what I was doing uh, for two reasons. First, that's very hard for me to hold, uh, you know, something I'm recording in one hand and then, you know, uh, I'm trying to fix underneath the boat and, you know, in small places. It's, it's just very, very hard. And second, it's not very effective in teaching uh, because boats are so different. Your boat can be completely different than how my boat is. But the setup is most likely, it is the same. So I'm gonna go over with you the setups on uh, marine rigging and installations. And this is gonna help you with any repairs. If you can understand this, uh, this will help you solve a lot of problems uh, and repair stuff on your own marine accessories like bilge pumps uh live wells and just get a good general understanding of how they work and you'll have no problems uh at all doing installations and you'll be able to save some money and not take into those pesky mechanics who are going to charge you uh a couple hundred dollars and you'll be out of the boat for maybe a week or two or longer so let's jump into it i put this presentation for you together um so if you have any questions just ask but let's let's jump into it guys all right good afternoon good evening whatever time it is to you guys welcome to the tutorial here i'm going to start off very very basic uh, this is probably something you've done before or it's maybe something you know but i thought it would be appropriate so basically uh, when you're doing an installation or trying to fix something, you have to know this principle that in every single circuit, no matter how it's routed, okay, basically you're going to have a load, okay? In this example, the pump is the load, okay? And the lo it's always going to end up like this one way or the other, okay? You have... A red wire a power source going from the battery to the pump okay or to the load and then it completes the circuit by going back around to the negative terminal or the ground okay that is now a pump that is in action it's working so that is basically how the circuit is always going to complete itself. If there's any break in that red wire or that black wire, the pump isn't going to work. Okay. And then you got to worry about the pump itself, the load itself. Okay. So just remember that that's very basic, but let's move on to like switches and uh, bus bars and stuff. And it'll help you understand a little bit more. And these diagrams are going to make a lot of sense when it comes to making uh, installations and repairs so let's move forward all right everybody so this time in this little schematic we got the pump the battery and the switch so we're going to add some control to our ability to turn that pump on and off and i don't know maybe on a very small boat you could see uh like a very small boat you could see a um a setup like this but most of your boats, especially where you're going to have multiple accessories, there is going to be another piece in there, but we'll get to it. 
So as mentioned before, uh, that pump is basically got to get a hot wire to it. Okay, the positive terminal of the battery to the positive terminal of the pump and uh, the negative wire, the ground, back to the battery. So let's look into how we can do that. Um, and one thing I should have emphasized before is just how helpful these schematics are um, when you're doing repair work or installations. Sometimes it's a great idea to just draw up a schematic real quick and look over it um especially when you're doing installations maybe save the schematics and stuff it's going to give you a guide guidance for repairs and installations i promise it'll make it a lot easier but let's just go ahead and jump into this okay how are we going to get that pump working with that switch well so this is what we're going to do guys uh, keep in mind that switches on boat accessories are usually going to be positive. So that means there's usually going to be red wires running to them, the hot wires and stuff. Uh, there are certain instances where um, switches are ran with a ground, but in this case, it's always going to be hot wires when it's like marine accessories, like uh, live wells and... Uh, bilge pumps and stuff but anyways i digress let's move forward okay guys so in this case we are going to have our battery run to one up let me change that to a red we're gonna we're gonna have our battery gonna run to that switch okay and that switch is going to run directly to that pump. Okay, that's going to be the red wire of the pump. Okay, so we got power to the pump. Now we got to complete the circuit. And it goes to the battery. So now we have the ability to turn that pump on and off with that switch. So you can see here automatically where are the failing points, okay? If there were to something that can go wrong. You got three wires, you got a pump, you got the battery itself, and you got the switch. So um, also there might be a fuse uh, somewhere in between there too. But uh, I think that should help you out in boats where there's multiple accessories. Uh, we can't have wires running all over the place like that from the back of the boat to the pump to the battery. It would just be too much of a mess. So in the next installation uh, schematic, we're going to introduce a bus bar and uh, that's going to keep things a lot more organized. And it's going to help you out too. So let's move on to that part. All right, boys and girls. So here we are. And that little squared box there with the positive and negative. Um, that is my drawing of a bus bar. And the prongs that you see stick into the side of them. We're just going to imagine that those are the fuses of the bus bar. So, the bus bar is going to help us from running a bunch of wires back and forth and stuff. I mean, you already have enough wires in a boat running around and stuff. It's impossible to, like, not impossible, but it's it can be very hard to, to like, try to guess which wire is which and stuff. There is color codes and stuff all put a picture of that up which helps but it doesn't always work color codes because the colors of the wires will fade over time so it's important to know how these circuits work but let's get on to how we're going to include that bus bar what the function of that bus bar is and i always like to think about the bus bar as like a large uh, power outlet 
uh, in your wall that you can connect things to. So, um, first off, we got to get power to that bus bar. So, how do we get the power to the bus bar? It's simple. Uh, in your boat, you're going to probably see somewhat of a thicker wire, okay, that runs from the battery to the bus bar right there, just like that. And if you also look on the boat, you're going to see a lot of wires running off that bus bar, okay? And so this can be done a couple ways, but in this example, I'll show you um, how it will look. It will definitely look like this. Um, so we have now power going to our bus bar, and then we have a wire going from the bus bar to the, hold on. We have a wire going from the bus bar to the switch, okay? And then we now have a wire running from our switch to the pump, okay? Now, what do we gotta do? We gotta complete the circuit and go back to ground. All right, so as you can see there, this is what most boat setups are going to look like. Uh, once again, before you do any repairs or anything, uh, draw this out or just save this, uh, save a screenshot or a photo of this. This will help out tremendously. Um, once again, the whole purpose of that bus bar is to keep a lot of wires, you know, running from the back of the boat to the front of the boat. So let me tell you, for example, we could have a, um, a live well pump. Let me put live well pump here. gonna be right here we have the live well pump okay and then let's we have another switch right we want to control the live well also obviously so um, let me see switch all right so here's gonna be another switch okay there will be another wire from the bus bar going into that switch. Okay. And then to the live well. And then the live well. Back to ground. So that is the purpose of that uh, bus bar. Um, lots of times you just plug accessories into that bus bar and then from the switch to the load, okay? So in this example, we have uh, our loads are the live well and the pump and they're both controlled by the switches. I drew up one little last schematic here, very similar to the prior one. Uh, the only difference is I have a color code there uh, from the pump to the switch. It's a brown wire, and usually that's standard. Your bilge pump wire is going to be brown. But like I said, you can't always depend on that because they will fade. Uh, I actually drew a yellow wire in this example, but let's just pretend it's brown. So my real life situation the other day was my pump wasn't working. I went to test it. It didn't work. Um, now, my pump has been seizing up lately, so when I uh, pop it open and I just wiggle the blade around, the, the impeller around, it unseizes and then it works. But the other day I did that and it still didn't work. So I figured, well, this pump's been going bad anyways. I go to the store. I buy a new pump. And I installed it, and it still didn't work. So I knew there was a problem, and one of these wires 
So um, what I simply did was I replaced this wire right here. So you may be asking me, um, how do you know it was that wire? Well, let's go back to the other schematic for a moment. If there was a problem with the circuit at this point, the wire that runs from the battery to the bus bar, then none of the switches at my helm would be working at all. And that is because of the way the electricity flows. If you get a break at this point, then you have broken the electrical path to everything it branches off to. And likewise guys, if that bus bar goes bad, all of the electricity to, is just gonna stop working at the helm. You're not gonna have any switch activate anything. And that wasn't my case, so uh, having a nice schematic like this helps me narrow it down. Before we wrap the presentation up, let's go over some helpful tools that you could use while doing this and some common failure points. Hello everybody, thanks for making it to this part of the tutorial. Now I'm going to show you the voltmeter. Let's talk about the voltmeter. Alright, so when you're using your voltmeter on the boat, you're going to want to keep it on DC setting, which is direct connect. Um, and we're going to be turning it to V, which stands for voltage. Uh, you're going to have it on DC, and that's going to help us uh, find out the amount of volts that are going through any given wire at a certain given point. Another useful feature is going to be the ohms. Uh, feature on it which is going to detect resistances in the wires and stuff um, keep in mind that when you are using uh, your meter on ohms you have to shut the power off to the boat so you can't use your ohms meter uh, and you have voltage running through the wires and stuff so just make sure those battery switches are off and everything's turned off if you're trying to detect resistance okay and likewise with the uh, volts, make sure your uh, everything is turned on and stuff, right? And you got to have it on DC for direct connect. So I'm going to show you my voltmeter real quick and what those symbols look like. So this is my voltmeter right here. And I actually have it on the ohm setting right there. It kind of looks like that horseshoe symbol. Uh, and it also has a continuity feature that I'll slightly talk about in a little bit and this right here is the volts okay and then DC all right so now let's talk about how to use this bad boy and some common failure points within the circuits all right people so these are uh some things that will commonly fail in the circuit um, due to corrosion or they'll just get weak over time. Um, this is the fuse, the pin connector, and the o-ring. Uh, those will, you want to definitely check for those. Lots of times these are the culprits in a failing circuit. Um, so, and it's just not limited to these three. Anything that's a connector, uh, a butt connector right here. A butt connector is used to connect two wires together. Um, so yeah, this butt connector right here, a wire goes into there, a wire goes into there, you crimp it down, and then usually you, uh, you know, you put some heat shrink over it. Those will, will fail too. So you got to watch those. Um, and so with these and stuff, you just kind of want to look into them, make sure they're okay. Um, so it's a good thing to replace those a lot. Same thing with these. Um, fuses, you can take a good quick look at them. Um, and you want to make sure like that fuse is there. It's solid. You, know, you don't want to see any buildup or corrosion on it or anything. If it's broken, guess what? The circuit is open. So... You don't have a closed circuit, your electricity isn't flowing. You don't get the full flow. So yeah, 
Gotta check these. These guys are a big one. All right, guys. So I got my meter on the ohms continuity feature. Uh, just for this example, it makes a beeping sound, and it's hard for me to maneuver all this stuff and hold the phone at the same time. But basically, my meter says uh, O dot L. I don't know what that stands for, but how the ohms feature works uh, is it shoots a little bit of juice through the circuit and uh, through one of the uh, pins, and it's picked up by the other pin, and then you'll get a little reading on there, and you will usually want the reading to be very, very low, like below, usually like below 0 0.5 or something. It's got to be very, 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 very low. That means there's very little resistance, but I have it on continuity right now, um, so it makes a little beeping sound, and I'm going to touch, let's pretend like these scissors right here, this is one point of a wire, and there's another point of the wire and these are two, uh, so uh, this is one, this is the, the the back of the boat, and this is the beginning of the boat, for example, right? It's the same wire, right? And we're gonna go, we're just gonna touch these two points right here. Okay, hold on, I gotta touch them. And then you're gonna come and see over near my meter, right, that it's no longer, on OL, it's at like 0 0.3 right there, 0.2, you see? If I lift up, it's on OL, it's not sensing anymore that juice flowing. Now I touch it again, and it goes back to zero, right? If you want, you can, uh, I'll put it on content, uh, on, um, on the feature where it makes a beeping sound. Hold on. Yeah, change the mode. Yeah, okay, so it's making a beeping sound. You can hear that. So it's 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 checking for continuity. So supposing that's a wire right there, you can find the same wire from the back of the boat running maybe through your boat, and then all of a sudden you see a wire at the front of the boat. You can test to see if it's the same wire. Alright guys, so I know this presentation is starting to get a little long, so I'm going to try to wrap it up here. I hope that you are getting as much out of it as possible, but I just have to finish off with a little bit of volts. Um, so, let's go over voltage, uh, checking voltage real quick. Um, obviously, you're going to set your uh, meter to volt and direct connect. Um, in this example, this is going to be the battery, uh, black is going to be the negative post of the battery, and this white is going to be the red post of the battery. So uh, to check the battery's voltage, you're just going to touch that negative post of the battery, you're going to touch the positive post of the battery, and then you should get 12 volts on your uh, meter reading. Um, if you want to start... Um, moving up the wire for example right if you you can like test right let's say let's say your next component is right here right it's the uh the bus bar and the uh the fuse right let's say you test right up here the bus bar is good right but then you test over here right and then you get you don't get 12 volts, right? So you're getting 12 volts up to this point, but you're not getting 12 volts up to this point. So the culprit's going to be most likely in this spot, right? So it, for example, it could be the fuse. The fuse might have been blown. Um, if you are getting 12 volts, like up to this point, um, you know, but you're not getting 12 volts up to that point, maybe. It's this butt connector right here. You might solve a big problem if you just replace that butt connector. Now, I can tell you, if you are getting 12 volts all the way up to that point like that, well, then at that point, you either have a problem with this, okay, or you got an issue with your wire going to ground. If that was the issue where it was your ground, you would take the positive pin 
and you would put it on that battery post and then you would start uh, checking up the uh, ground wire or the black wire to make sure that you're getting 12 volts up to a certain point. Same way, except you got the leads reversed. Um, so, but yeah, if, and if everything does check out guys, um, then, you know, you're getting 12 volts up to this point, just fine. Then it's going to be your pump. So scrap the pump, get a new one. All right. So I think that's going to do it for this, um, tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and learned from it. And, uh, if you have any questions, just ask, um, no such thing as a stupid question. Um, tried to explain it the best I could. And um, so if it was a little disorganized, just you know, let me know. Please ask if you have any curiosities. Um, and see you in the next one. Peace.